Hi everyone, welcome to Facebook Friday. So glad that you're here. I hope you've had a great week and going into the weekend, you can just relax a little, take time for yourself and the people that you love. So today we get to also talk about taking care of our instruments, specifically the violin, but I'll also teach a little bit about cello as well. They're very similar. So let's get started. If you have purchased a violin or are just about to, this is really important. And also I find even if you have a violin, it's good to review how to take care of an instrument. So this post is for you all. Welcome. I'm Miss Melody with Violin Practice Partner. I've been teaching violin for 25 years and my mission is to light the world through music by teaching children the violin because I have found that when we teach children violin, they also learn skills such as building confidence, gaining their ability to learn life skills, and increasing their academic achievement. So jump aboard and let's go. How do we take care of that beautiful investment that you just created? So you go to a shop, maybe you're renting, maybe you're buying. If you're buying, know that the instruments tend to go up in value, that it is indeed an investment, unlike many other things that we buy in this world, it is worth taking care of. So what can we do to maintain that investment and have it continue to serve your child and your family for many years to come and generations to come, in fact? How do we do that? Well, I'm gonna give you four points. We'll start with number one, how to store your violin. Storing the violin is really important because it is susceptible to other elements. The wood of the violin is often made of maple, made out of maple wood, or, um, sorry, I have mosquitoes around here. <laughs> Yet maple is very common and also spruce wood. So it's really important that we take care of the instrument and even the varnish. So I live in a very hot climate, so it's very important to not leave the instrument in the car, even if you don't live in a hot climate, because the elements can affect the instrument sound and the varnish. Very, very important to not go from extreme as well, too cold, too hot, too humid. You want to gradually have, it's better to gradually have the instrument um, have like a sitting time. For example, when I moved from Seattle, which is very, very humid, to another very dry climate, I found a climate somewhere in between to let the our cello sit so it wouldn't burst its seams, right? It needed about a month to sit and be able to get used to somewhere in between before we brought it out to a hotter climate. So the instrument is affected with the different elements. So we wanna know how to take care of that. You can also get humidifiers that you can buy at the music store to actually input into the F holes to help humidify and keep the, uh, the right amount of moistness for the instrument. Great, let's talk about cases. So I pulled out my daughter's first violin and case, very little. But you want to have a case that's sturdy and strong. A hard case is ideal to help keep that violin Protect it. In fact, last week I had the chance to go teach one of my violin practice partner students um, live, which was so fun. And do you know what? As they were backing out to go to their lesson, the violin had been accidentally left out and they ran over the violin case. But do you know what the amazing thing was? When we opened it up, the violin was just fine. They had had a card case and it protected the violin. This just happened last week. So it is worth getting a case that is strong because you never know, you never know. And the violin was saved, so it's a, it's a good ending. So we have uh, the cases here. There's storage for the bow. Um, I also like cases that have storage for a shoulder rest. Um, and you'll see a lot of instruments, they come with this. This helps protect the violin, helps keep the dust off, and also can help with sun and heat and cool. I just, I tell my younger students that, yeah, it's like the blanket, get the blanket on the violin. Um, just like we need rest, the instrument and elements also need rest. So it's important to know how to put the violin away appropriately. Again, this is a very teeny little instrument, but we want to place the instrument gently in and you'll notice i don't have a shoulder rest on there or a chin rest for that matter <laughs> but usually there is 
and you place the instrument in, and it is important to go ahead and latch it to make sure that the violin is secure. That's important. If you put a shoulder rest on, um, be very careful to make sure the height is not too high because what happens is often students leave the shoulder rest on that goes right underneath the instrument and when we close the case it actually puts pressure on this really important part of the violin the bridge and we don't want pressure on the bridge bridges are expensive to fix a lot of them are hand carved so we want to protect the bridge so i recommend taking the shoulder rest off and let me get a shoulder rest in case you have a question of what a shoulder rest is let me pull one out here um, often it is a sponge like this or my shoulder rest looks like this. This is the shoulder rest. You wanna pull those off to put it in its case. In very few cases, it might be small enough, but do check and make sure there's not that pressure going on with the bridge, because that's very important. Um, so we put the instrument in, we can put the shoulder rest away, and that's how we can place the instrument. And then we put the blanket on top. That's helpful too. Good. Um, and the bow goes in as well. We'll talk a little bit more about the bow. So it's important to have a good case again and to put it away properly. I am actually going to pull this little bow out. When an instrument, when we play the bow, we actually tighten the horse hair. This is made out of horse hair. It's very important that we keep and maintain it. And when we play an instrument, we actually, we tighten the bow a few directions. And I like to tell my students righty tighty to make it tighter, right? And lefty loosey. That helps to play the, the violin and the instrument. But when a student is done playing, we want to loosen the hairs of the bow to make sure it also gets a rest because it can warp the stick. So it is important to loosen the bow a good rule of thumb is tighten the bow where it is a pencil space um, in the middle. That's a good start. Later on, as the kids learn spiccato coming off the string, the bow can tighten a little bit more. And then loose, you're gonna feel where, there, where there's less tension in the screw, and then it can rest comfortably without warping the bow for long periods of time. Um, usually takes a while to do that. So if you haven't loosened the bow for a while, don't stress about it. But it is important if you can on a regular basis to just start that habit and loosen the bow a little bit so that the bow can stay healthy. So that's a little bit about how to put your instrument into the case and store it properly. Let's move on. I wanna talk about how to keep the violin clean. So with our instrument, we have to have something called rosin on the bow in order for it to create sound. If you just got a brand new bow and it's not making sound, it's probably because it needs rosin. So let me pull out one of my favorite cello rosins here. Um, this is great. So rosin is usually made out of, out of tree sap. And let me pull a rosin out so you can see. Um, we put rosin on the bow, but it does leave a residue. And so it's important after the child or you are done playing the instrument to wipe it down with a soft, gentle cloth. And it's not difficult, but it is important to maintain that. So I'm so proud of my son. He just actually just put this music back together and I looked in there and he had even thought of his cloth that he got from grandma. So that's awesome. So you just go ahead and wipe the instrument. You can see um, I purposely have not wiped my instrument. There's a lot of white residue and rosin right now. So just gently wipe it down. And sometimes it's a little squeaky. So if your kid's ears are sensitive, just be aware. And wiping gently under the instrument on the fingerboard and the strings to get the rosin residue off, any dust that has collected and even oils um, from our fingers just to maintain it and keep the strings clean and keep our instrument clean. Later on, you can polish the instrument. It doesn't need to be on a regular basis, but there is polish that you can get. Just have to you know, make sure to follow the instructions, not put it on the fingerboard. We don't want to do that. Um, there are other different cleanings. So I wanted to mention for the bow, 
that sometimes there's black that collects at the very bottom. And sometimes that means that and he needs a new bow rehair, but you can also go get just a little bit of dish soap, just a little bit, and a soft cloth, just gentle, and gently, just a little bit rub, and it will help take that oil out. So that's a great trick that helps maintain that bow. It does tend to get really dirty down there. Great. Um, let me also mention that you can wipe off your bow as well, just a gentle wipe where the, the rosin may have gotten on the, on the bow. Not the hair necessarily, but on the stick. You can just gently wipe that, and that will help maintain a healthy bow. Great, so, so far we've talked about the importance of correct and, and proper storage, as well as the ability to take care of your instrument quickly and easily each day by simply wiping it down and keeping it clean clean from rosin residue, oils of our fingers, and just the other elements and dust that it may collect. Great, I have two more points for you. Repairs and maintenance. You will want to be able to connect with a luthier. A luthier is someone that knows about the instrument, that are able to often make instruments themselves and have gone through school to know how the violin works and how it gets the best sound and the balance of the instrument. There's a lot of physics involved in creating a violin. So I recommend, if you don't have a luthier yet, I recommend reading reviews and getting recommendations because you want someone, it's like a great doctor, you want somebody that can really take care of your instrument. So when is it time to go get maintenance? Well, things you want to look for is the bridge. Make sure that the bridge is standing um, more at a 90 degree angle. That's important. If you see it bending or it's shifted over, it's important to get that corrected because again, bridges are expensive and you don't want that to snap. So we wanna take good care of our bridge. Other things to look for, like if there's a crack, really important to get it in very quickly to the luthier. Um, other, just regular maintenance, I'd recommend bringing your instrument at least once a year. Like even, it doesn't matter if you're on Twinkle or if we're on the bold A minor, it's good to have a yearly checkup, just like we do for our doctor, to just keep that, the maintenance of the instrument. And they may find something. Even inside of the violin, we have something called a sound post. And just a few months ago, I had a student that was so diligent and brought her violin up on her vacation um, to practice. And then she came back and it turns out that um, she had forgotten her violin. Oh no, right? <laughs> so they were able to ship the violin back over. And when she came to lessons, I heard the violin play and I it was a different instrument. It did not sound the same. There was a buzz going on. And there was not the same resonance. And I thought, oh, Oh no, something has happened. So I asked her, I said, oh, can I look at your instrument? And I looked inside, wow, and sure enough, the sound post was gone. It was missing. It had fallen out during, during the shipment. Um, and luckily, took it to a luthier, got that sound post back in, and the violin sounded beautiful again. So we're grateful for luthiers, um, and always give thanks for people that do a good job. So you do want to have regular checkups of your instrument. They can also help you buy the correct strings to help the instrument sound at its best and do sound checks as well. If you find that there is a string fraying, that's really important, like get a new string quickly because it can actually cut the child or your finger. So you do want to replace that. Um, let's go to the bow maintenance. So I brought this little bow out because I want you to see Oh, I tightened it. That sometimes hairs get kind of loose and actually fall out. Hopefully you can see that. Um, some even break, like especially playing like a big chord or fiddle number, it's easy for those hairs to break loose. So what do we do? We don't want to just yank it out <laughs> because it can pull other hairs or from the top or the base. Um, I've used small scissors or even a nail clipper or even just really gentle tugging, but be careful. Don't have your child just yank it out because then you might be in for a new bow rehair earlier than you would like. The bow does need rehair on a regular basis. It depends on how often, how frequent that the violin is being played and the bow is being played. So I know um, one colleague of mine 
without a doubt, every six months always gets a bow right here. Now, if your child's on twinkle or doing pre-twinkle, obviously you're not going to need that. But again, it is wise once a year to just have a look at it and see if it's needed to get a bow right here. And honestly, I want to let you know that sometimes the little bows is actually cheaper to replace the whole bow than it is to get a bow right here. Just a little tip. So you might wanna check into that for those little bows. Um, great. So we do want to take care of the bow as well. I think so often we focus so much on the violin because it makes the sound, but we couldn't really make as much beautiful sound without the bow. So the bow is very important to maintain, to have the rosin, the amount of rosin that will give it a good sound, to wipe it down, to make sure that it gets a bow rehair when it is needed. How do you know if it needs a bow rehair? Um, if you see that there's a big chunk missing, <laughs> like it's not full at the base or, or the top, that's a good indicator. Um, I had a transfer student come and there was only like half the hair there and the sound was definitely affected. So once we got a Bowie hair, wow, we just doubled the sound. So go ahead and every year, just take a quick, take it to a luthier, have them check out your instrument, make sure it's doing great. Um, and a lot of the times it's really minor things and sometimes nothing at all. So that's very helpful to know. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you were able to get a few ideas of how to better take care of your instrument or continue to take care of your instrument. When I teach, when I introduce the violin to my first beginning students, my three, four and five year olds, and up to eight, I just, I love to present the instrument almost like a child, like a little baby. And if we can just teach how precious an instrument is and how we can respect it with, with gentleness, I think that carries into their playing and respect for others. And it may seem small, but I do think as the child learns to care for their instrument, they can also learn to care for others because it's in the small details, right? The, the great service um, that they're able to, to help others at a deeper level. Thank you so much again for joining me. Please let me know if you have any other questions. If you're interested into a violin's buying guide, I have that as well. So just let me know if you'd like me to send that to you and just comment below. Have a wonderful day. Remember that you are enough. You are the person that your child needs today. Bye-bye.